Okay. Ooh, ooh, rolly chairs. Collar straight. Let's talk about Jupyter Notebooks, because they're super important. Jupyter Notebooks are one of the most well-known tools for testing, development, and analysis. You can execute Python code in cells and see their outputs just below. We can add documentation and create images and charts when needed, and the format is super easy to read. And 99% of the time, this is where our interaction with Jupyter stops. Now, don't get me wrong, this is already super useful. But what if I were to tell you that we could use Jupyter Notebooks for more than just development? And so in this video, we are going to see how we can use Jupyter Notebooks for production systems. But wait, what is production and what are we trying to do with Jupyter Notebooks? Let's take this notebook here. It's one of my old notebooks on predicting fraudulent transactions. It's got some text cells, code cells, and some outputs. And I've trained a model here. There's nothing really out of the ordinary. It's just your typical notebook. It looks like the model training is going pretty well and the evaluation looks pretty good too. Now we're ready for this model to be used to fight fraud. What this entails is taking the core code for the model, stripping away the extra parts that generate the charts and whatnot, and then putting it into this Python file that looks kind of like this. We can have this script execute probably, you know, once in a day, once in a week, as frequently as we would want to. And on each time we execute this Python script, we would train a new model on the most recent transactions. These final Python files are the only ones that we see on GitHub. And this is great because the code looks clean. But as these notebooks become complex, it's easy to miss out on some code when copying over to a Python file. Also, the accompanying analysis could be pretty useful to see for every run. But is there a world where we can skip this transferring of code to Python scripts and just run Jupyter Notebooks directly? Well, there is, and the center of that is a technology called Papermill. To understand what Papermill is, we're going to take a look at Jupyter Notebooks a little closer. They are essentially just JSON files with the cell content embedded in this JSON. Let's open this up with Jupyter. So at the top, we see Python 3, and this is a kernel, which is an environment that executes the code we see in this notebook. Python 3, or rather the IPython kernel, can execute cells that contain Python. And there are plenty of kernels you can use depending on your use case, but for now, the default Python kernel works well. This notebook is going to train a model based on past data, but I want to refresh this model once a day using the most recent data only, and I only want to pass in some date as a parameter to this notebook and use this to run the notebook. These two steps of parameterizing the notebook and executing the notebook is exactly what Papermill helps with, and you can code this logic up pretty easily too. In fact, let's add parameters to this notebook and execute it with Papermill. So I'm here in my terminal window, and right now, before I start anything, I want to start my virtual environment. Right now, it's just on the base environment, but I use Anaconda, or rather, more importantly, Miniconda, to do this. 
So Miniconda is kind of like a stripped down version of Anaconda, where if you kind of look at the, the actual package installations, it's around like 60 megabytes. Whereas like the Anaconda installations are typically a lot larger, more like 500 to 600 megabytes. So you're saving 10 times as much space with Miniconda. And so we just use it. We're gonna do a Conda install, or rather a Conda create. And we're gonna name this environment, let's just say Python environment. And what we're gonna do here is also install um, Python 3. So let's just say Python equals three right now. Let's get that running. Cool, now that that's installed, let's activate our environment with the same exact helper function that they gave here. Right, with a conda install. And now you can see that the Python environment environment has been installed. So now at this point, when we want to, we need to install Papermill and we also want to install, well, Jupyter Notebook. Now, if you do a simple conda install Papermill, let's just try to get that installed. You'll notice here that it should fail if it fails. So yeah, failed with initial frozen solve, retrying, and it's gonna keep retrying until eventually it says that the following packages are not available from the current channels. It says they need to search for alternate channels that might provide the content package you're looking for. So that's exactly what we're going to be doing. We're going to be looking through another channel for these packages called Conda Forge, and it should be available there. And what you can do here is just a Conda install and what you could do is specify a channel equals conda forge. And then we can install a paper mill. And while I'm at it, I can also install a Jupyter Notebook. And there are also some other libraries that you can install along with Jupyter just to make it even, you know, easier to use. And at this point, we just need to start our Jupyter Notebook. Okay, so this current Jupyter Notebook UI tree right now is just the current directory where we're going to be trying to schedule this notebook, which we're calling Fight Fighting Fraud. So here's the notebook right now where on the top, you'll see that it says it's using an IPython kernel, which means that all of the cells here are going to be executed with Python in mind. So at this point, like I mentioned before, we want to make this cell, that current date uh, cell, a parameterizable one, where we wanna pass in this date and then potentially you know, have this entire model train depending on that. So let's just do that by going now to view, cell tour bar, and then adding tags. So now, above every cell, we can now add these special little tags here. And we don't really need to change the tags or do anything with any cell except for this current cell, which we will tag as parameters. We'll add that tag. And so we see parameters appearing right here. We can add multiple tags. Um, for, for all these other cells, they're just going to be added as metadata and it's going to just be added in uh, in the JSON for the notebook, you'll see like tags and one of the tags is parameters. It'll be a list of tags. In this case, the list only contains of one item. So now that we have done this, we can actually go now back to our directory tree and we are going to create a new notebook where it's gonna be a new Python 3 kernel notebook. And this notebook is going to be used to actually inject parameters to fightingfraud.ipynb, as well as you know start some execution as we're passing some value. So first, let me just call this um, paper mill runner, right? That's a that's an appropriate name. We're gonna import paper mill as pm. And then we're gonna inspect this notebook just to see what we see here. pm dot 
inspect notebook and we want to inspect fight fighting fraud i believe that's what it's called fraud dot i pi and b and as you can see here there is one parameter it's called current date and its default value that is if we were to not inject any parameters into it would be this may 2020 date now i kind of want to change this so we'll just add another cell and we can do that by using paper mills execute execute notebook execute notebook Okay, and what this now requires is a few parameters. So the first is the input notebook, which is fighting fraud .i pi and b. Then it requires the output notebook, which we'll just call output notebook for now dot i pi and b. And then what this also requires is the actual uh, dictionary of parameters. So we say parameters is equal to, I'm just gonna put this in a dictionary and let's say current date, rather, there's no need of quotations here. So let's just say 2020-01-01. And so now this notebook should execute with this 2021, only using data until January, 2021. So we'll see that in action by executing this right now. Also, um, this notebook, I think in the past, or maybe some of your, your versions might come with this, with this package called a TQDM. TQDM is very useful because you can, you know, for longer running processes, especially you can see a progress bar of how much that process has completed. It's a great way to just see the progress of like very long running tasks, just to make sure that you're not going to wait indefinitely. All right, so the execution is now complete. Let's go ahead and look at the actual output notebook. And so now if we go back to our tree directory, you can see this output underscore notebook was created just a minute ago. Now this notebook has completely been executed top to down, which is kind of why you see these output cells right here. And in scrolling down, you'll see here that we initially had a parameter cell, which said May 2nd, 2020, but because of paper mill, it injected the parameters that are, you know, the ones that we passed in, which was January 1st, 2020. And so now the entire notebook is executed with these parameters in mind. And so if we keep scrolling here, you'll kind of see before the first transaction was, you know, it was same 2019 January, but now the last transaction is just, well, 20, 2019 December 31st, which is exactly what we would expect. And so this entire notebook is only executed on, you know, just that select amount of data. And you can see like the outputs for, for everything here. The point here is that you can execute these notebooks now just by injecting parameters in a very pretty simple way as it only requires like just a single line of code, if anything. What's really cool here is that even if we even just like write one single line of code, we can already start the scheduling process. And many larger companies actually use this to their advantage. Like for example, we have companies like Netflix that do use paper mill. So they have this template.ipyb notebook that's sitting in a file store. In this case, that file store is EFS, which allows you to to basically scale and store files on distributed systems. Now, this specific notebook is going to be like our fight fraud at IPI and B. This is then input to paper mill. Paper mill will parameterize the notebook. It'll inject parameters like we saw, and it will execute that notebook. And once that execution is complete, it's going to store this notebook on a different file store. In this case, Every single run is stored on S3. Apart from Netflix that uses paper mill for scheduling notebooks, it's also Amazon. So AWS has SageMaker, which is essentially a suite of tools that allows machine learning engineers to just easily develop and just develop products from, from development to deployment and helps them in that entire phase. 
And SageMaker notebooks, if you look here, also make use of paper mill for running scheduled jobs for these notebooks. So what's really cool here overall is that the simple code that you can run on your local machine is also code and is also an entire paradigm that larger companies like Netflix and Amazon actually use. The only difference is maybe they'll, their file storages are just far more scale than the ones that you have on your local machine. And because of this, you can see how powerful Jupyter Notebooks can become and also how easy it is for you to start even getting it set up on your local systems. And so, I hope this was super useful and very interesting. Until next time, I will see you very soon with another video.